מתאמצים. אחות שלי, אלגרה, אימא שלי, מטילדה, ותינוקת, ריג'ינה, בת שישה חודשים, אח שלי, שמואל, כולם נהרגו מהפצצה מהאוויר. אחרי שלושה חודשים שומעים רמקולים שכל היהודים צריכים לצאת מהבתים ולהיכנס לאיזה בניין? לרודוס. היינו בערך 1,700 נפשות. היו בינינו כמה יהודים, הייתה להם אזרחות טורקית, והקונסול הטורקי בא לקחת אותם והוציא אותם משם. הם נשארו ברודוס. הגרמנים עשו אזעקה שכל האוכלוסייה ייכנס בבתים ולא יראה מה הם עושים. מהבניין הזה עד הנמל היה חתיכת דרך, ובן אדם לא היה עד שהגענו לנמל. האי היה ריק. היו שלוש עוד ארבע נדמה לי ספינות. היינו שמונה ימים בים. ספינה אחת לקחה 200 יהודים מכוס. בפיראוס פגשנו את דניאל רחמים, הוא היה גר בלרוס. היו עסקים שם. אנחנו רואים, מה אתה עושה פה? אז הוא אמר, בניאל מה אתה אמר בפינאי? אנשים פורון ג'ודיו, הם הפליגו לארוס בשביל לקחת בן אדם אחד. בכלל לא חשבנו שאנחנו נגיע לאושוויץ, לא ידענו מה זה אושוויץ. הזקנים והילדים לקחו אותם לתאי גזים, ישר. אבא שלי היה בן אדם חזק, אבל היה לו אבא שלא הולך. האימא שלו, סבתא שלי, מסכנה חולה. הוא אמר, אני הולך עם הזקנים. והוא הלך. הוא היה בן 42. תעלה המשואה. משמר יעבור לדום. משמר, דום.
major defeats in Normandy in the summer of 1944, remnants of German forces withdrew across eastern France and Belgium towards the German border by the end of August. As the Allied pursuit across France and Belgium continued, distances increased beyond the range of a single truck. Offensive operations slowed to a standstill, allowing the German forces to fall back and regroup. The British proposed Operation Market Garden, an ambitious plan to bypass the Siegfried Line by hooking around its northern end, allowing the Allies to cross the Rhine. The plan consisted of two operations, Market and Garden. Market would deploy three airborne divisions to capture the bridges over the Meuse, Wall and Rhine rivers, together with crossings over several smaller channels. Garden consisted of the British 30th Corps, which would lead the ground offensive, linking up the bridges. If successful, 30th Corps, together with the airborne forces, would break out of the Arnhem Bridgehead and head east toward Germany and its most important industrial area, the Ruhr Valley. The operation started on Sunday, September 17, 1944, when 2,000 transport airplanes lift off from airfields in England. On board are three divisions totaling 20,000 men. The American 101st Airborne Division lands north of Eindhoven with the objective of capturing five bridges. After a brief delay caused by an 88mm gun and a machine gun post, the bridge at Sun was blown up by the Germans on approach. The other bridges are successfully captured. The American 82nd Airborne Division is dropped in the Nijmegen area. Their goal is to capture the bridges over Meuse, Wall, and the canal linking the two rivers. The bridge over the Meuse is successfully captured, and so are the crossings over the canal. The attack on the Wall Bridge failed, leaving the bridge in German hands. To the west of Arnhem, forces of the British 1st Airborne Division landed without serious incident, but problems associated with the poor plan began soon after. Only half of the division arrived with the first lift, and only half of these could advance on the bridge. The remaining troops had to defend the drop zones overnight for the arrival of the second lift on the following day. Two of the three battalions of the 1st Parachute Brigade were slowed down by small German units of a training battalion which had quickly established a thin blocking line covering the obvious routes into Arnhem. Lieutenant Colonel John Frost, 2nd Parachute Battalion, advancing eastwards along the southernmost road into Arnhem near the Rhine, found its route largely undefended. They arrived at the bridge in the evening and set up defensive positions at the north end. In the south, 300 guns of the Corps artillery opened fire, firing a rolling barrage in front of 30th Corps start line. The advance was led by tanks and infantry of the Irish Guards. The lead units broke out of 30th Corps bridgehead on the Meuse Escott Canal and crossed into the Netherlands. Around noon on Monday, September 18th, the 101st Airborne were met by the lead reconnaissance units from 30th Corps. Radio contact alerted the main force that the Sun Bridge had been destroyed and requested that a Bailey Bridge be brought forward. During the night, 30th Corps engineers constructed a Bailey Bridge within 10 hours across the Wilhelmina Canal. By the end of the day, the 1st and 3rd Parachute Battalions had entered Arnhem and were within 2 kilometers, 1.2 miles of the bridge with approximately 200 men, one-sixth of their original strength. During the early morning hours of the third day, September 19th, the 1st Parachute Brigade, supported by remnants of the 3rd Battalion, began its attack towards Arnhem Bridge. As soon as it became light, the 1st Battalion was spotted and halted by fire from a German defensive position, with no hope of breaking through. The 500 remaining men withdrew westwards in the direction of the main force, 5 kilometers, 3.1 miles away near the landing zone. Units of the 82nd Division made contact with the Grenadier Guards of the 30th Corps at Grave. By the afternoon of 20 September, the British positions around the north end of Arnhem Bridge had weakened considerably. Casualties, mostly wounded, were high from constant shelling. An acute lack of ammunition, especially anti-tank munitions, enabled enemy armor to demolish British positions from point-blank range. Food, water and medical supplies were scarce. The Germans overcame pockets of resistance throughout the day, 
gaining control of the northern bridge approaches and permitting reinforcements to cross the span and reinforce units further south near Nijmegen. The last radio message broadcasted from the bridge, out of ammo, God save the King. Boats requested by the 82nd Airborne from 30th Corps arrived in the afternoon. The American paratroopers were rowed across the wall in 26 canvas assault boats. About half the boats survived the crossing under heavy fire. The surviving paratroopers then proceeded fighting to the north end of the bridge. German forces withdrew from both ends of the bridge after the 30th Corps Guards tanks secured the bridge. On 21st September, the fifth day of the operation, approximately 3,500 survivors of the 1st Airborne Division established themselves in the buildings and woods around Oyster Beak with the intention of holding a bridgehead on the north side of the Rhine until 30th Corps could arrive. Throughout the day, their position was heavily attacked on all sides. That same day, after two days of delay due to the weather, the Polish 1st Independent Parachute Brigade entered the battle. Two of the brigade's three battalions were dropped amidst heavy German fire, opposite the 1st Airborne Division's position on a new drop zone south of the Rhine near the village of Dreil. The 3rd Battalion was dropped 12 to 15 miles away near Grave. The following three days, the Germans attacked the British positions on the north side of the river and the Polish on the south side. On Monday, September 25, the ninth day of battle, the 1st Airborne Division received their orders to withdraw across the Rhine. This could not be done until nightfall, and in the meantime, the division struggled to survive. By the next morning, they had withdrawn 2,398 survivors. Of approximately 10,600 men of the 1st Airborne Division who fought north of the Rhine, 1,485 had died. The prized Arnhem Bridge, for which the British had fought so hard, did not survive the war. Allied B-26 bombers aircraft destroyed it on 7 October to deny its use to the Germans. It was replaced with a bridge of similar appearance in 1948 and renamed John Frost Bridge on 17 December 1977. As the German occupation of southern Greece begins to break up under the onslaught of British land forces and local partisans, ships of the Royal Navy and destroyers of the Greek Navy head shoreward through the waters of the Aegean. They carry large forces of troops to put an end to another chapter of Nazi tyranny and oppression. Many of those who survived the Nazis' unspeakable brutalism have since succumbed to old age. But not so Anita Lasker Walfisch. She was a youthful member of the Auschwitz Orchestra, in which she played the cello. You arrive in Auschwitz, then you are taken to a block, a special block, where people shave your hair and tattoo a number on your arm, and this is all done by prisoners themselves. So I have a conversation with this girl who was um, processing me. And of course she asked me, so, so what did you do before? What did you do before you were arrested? And I said, I used to play the cello. Then I said, you play the cello? Fantastic, you'll be saved. By that time I was naked, without hair, with a number on my arm, not a very pretty sight. But I can say, I think without hesitation, that it saved my life. <laughs> 